So I'm a global futurist. I used to be the, the global futurist and head of long-term research at HP. Uh, and I'm really interested in what you can and can't know about the future. And it turns out, hmm. you know, whenever things go bad, you hear CEOs, you hear people say, hey, it was it was a black swan. I, I have no idea. I couldn't have known this. When you dig a little deeper, what you always, almost always discover uh, is that it's what I call a rogue wave. It's, it, it's a, something, a massive wave of change, call it COVID, that became unmanageable because individually uh, manageable ways of change, smaller things uh, overlapped, they collided in the same place in the same time. And people didn't want to think about it. They, want, they thought about all of these things individually, but not, not together. And that's what I study, what we can uh, and can't know uh, about the future. Uh, and, so and, and it what, turns, sorry. So what, what can you know? I mean, it's because it's, well, you don't have yeah. a crystal ball, but like, it, tell me, is it, is it by looking at things that have happened in the past, we can predict what's going to happen in the future? Is that what it is? It's, it's two things. Uh, Sometimes by looking at the past, you can predict the range of things that are likely to happen right. in the future, right? right? Sure. We had sure, pandemics sure. before, the impacts were knowable before, you start to take a look at what the impact, you know, what's going on today and, and what that impact would be. Uh, and it becomes relatively knowable. If you talk to people like Larry Brilliant, you know, they, they weren't super surprised that this thing happened. You know, people who were looking at this problem, they weren't super surprised. The issue is that a lot of people chose not to look and a lot of people mm. didn't have a system for looking at it. And it turns out that when you have a system for looking uh, at the range of possibility, not one thing, right? One, th the thing you plan on never happens. You know, if you take a look, there's a study, I believe from 2000 to 2010 of uh, 7,000 uh, medium and large companies and their, whether they met their forecasts uh, over 10 years, guess how many did? Less than 10%. Okay, go down again. It was Less not 700, 1%. it was 10, 10, 10 of them. Yeah, I can tell you something about statistics. It was not their fault that they succeeded. <laughs> Great line. And I so like when we take a look at uh, the range of possibility, the, 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 what, the, the range of volatility, you know, there are two things we want to be thinking about here. You know, the first is, you know, we have these plans in our lives and in our businesses where we have compound growth, right? We're going to do 6% better next year, 6% better, so on and so forth. But we fail to pay attention to what they call compound volatility, right? Oh. What happens when that baseline shifts? Because right. what's happening is we move forward into the next decade. You know, as we see social trends, we see economic trends, we see technological trends, they're all overlapping, they're all going to collide, and they're going to they're gonna compound to create greater volatility. And when that happens, the way you think about strategy, the way you think about growth, the way you think about your business, your future, changes. It stops being about how do I optimize and cut the fat, and it starts being about where do I optimize by having extra stores, effort, extra buffers, or uh, making sure that I'm increasing my optionality if something changes. How do I uncouple my threats from my opportunities? And that's very different than the world we've been in for the last 40 years, where we've had seen greater trade harmonization, uh, demographics globally have driven growth. Um, we've seen US, the US is a monopolar power. We haven't seen serious competition uh, against the US dollar as the major uh, currency of international trade. Um, we haven't seen large military uh, incursions. I mean, there, there, there have been, it, we, the US just pulled out of Afghanistan, but we yeah. haven't seen World War I, we haven't seen World War II, we haven't seen those kinds of global issues. Looking forward, all of these things, the tensions, the likelihoods of all of these things um, are flipping. And so we've got to stop thinking about how do we do compound growth and start thinking about how do we take advantage of compound volatility? So and that's a me, radically different way of looking at things. Let me dig in a little bit on that because it, 
it feels like in in some senses i liked i want to also have you answer the having a system for looking at these things so the companies have a system so i want to i want to make sure we capture that but it feels like it's it was fairly calm seas i love the sea metaphor the rogue wave i get that live 200 yards from the beach here in santa barbara so i get that and it feels like we had we had the pandemic we had racial injustice we had all the the economic well, there's there's a lot of turmoil right it's it's not calm at all and to your point of compounding all of those things uh, we had a guest on last year who called it she's from john hopkins she called it a syndemic which was the collision of multiple pandemics right mm -hmm. um one of the things one wonders is I have two questions. One, do we have to get good at riding waves? And that's a skill that we probably don't have. And two, does, you know, I'm going to guess you have a system for looking into the future. Do you feel like the waves are going to calm down anytime soon and you could define soon any way you want? I don't think they're calming. Let's go backwards. I don't think they're calming down between between now and 2040. Um, the the reason is that that's kind of probably close to where the inflection point is between uh, U.S. and Chinese dominance on, on the world stage. So I, I don't see it decreasing in my professional career. Okay. Um, the second question I think you were asking was about systems. So I think that there are three things that you need as an organization, as an individual in your career, right? Uh, and I call them the ABCs of resilient growth, right? So you have to increase yeah. awareness, like almost all companies, right? We, we say, okay, we're going to do what we can control. So we're going to focus on our finances. We're going to focus on our operations, right? The reality is that between 1999 and 2019, 75% of the two-year plus 20% decreases in firm value were the result of external change or the result of strategic failure. So mm. things like demand forecast, Google made your product free. Uh, so my question is, why are we focusing 95% of our people on finance and operations without telling them what we want them to focus on, mm. where we want resilience, where we want agility, and just we're focused on optimization, I think is a huge uh, risk. So awareness. And then the second piece that uh, the B and ABCs is behavior change. So if you have a four year degree, right, you maybe you have a degree in uh, the quantitative social sciences, right? Uh, you probably know a lot about what I call reality testing, right? How to figure out what's actually there, what's actually going on. Um, but if you have someone who's got an English major, right? Maybe they, they know a lot about looking at scenarios and, and telling stories about the future, but they don't really understand how to start from that baseline. So on and so forth. There are five major skill sets that, uh, that I look at and I call them the rogue method. So reality testing, uh, observing systems, uh, generating the range of futures, uncoupling threats from opportunities, right? Like mechanical engineers are really good at that. And that's why a lot of Mechies actually end up in program management. Uh, and then experimentation. So we see a lot of organizations, uh, General Motors being a great example, right? You can say, hey, they, they're innovative, they're not innovative. I'll tell you over a hundred years, they spent a lot of money on R&D. They're an innovative company. But what they've done is they've made a better car, better car, better car, better car, better car, better car. And then all of a sudden they've made this electric vehicle that goes 150,000 miles without a tune-up. Well, that's a problem because their entire business model is based on selling cars to dealers who make their, their working capital by doing maintenance on those cars for three years and then selling another car. Right. Well, what happens? Well, they don't see their customer for 12 years. Right. It's a foundational issue. <laughs> um, and so how do you think about innovation differently? How do you think about experimentation differently? And I, I think that there's a portfolio approach, just like a, an investment portfolio. If you take a look at a well-structured investment portfolio, it has some combination of like, you know, put a ding in the universe investments, right? We're gonna, we're gonna find the next Facebook. Uh, it has a, reliable, a whole range of reliable investments, right? We're gonna buy you know, Fortune 500 index fund. 
Uh, and then it has a whole, uh, uh, some sustaining investments or some counter cyclical investments. So there's a guy named Nassim Taleb who, uh, he wrote the Black Swan actually. Um, oh. There's, there's a investment funds that use his philosophy. When COVID hit, they did, I think, 5,000% growth in a quarter. Right. So, so by putting a little bit of money in that, like what happens when the world goes bad fund, uh, the, the people who invested in that, they were able to offset a lot of the, a lot of the, the firm failures, uh, growth failures from, from the other investments. And so, you know, how do you do those insurance investments too? And so when we think about uh, our investment portfolios, I think we want to look at, you know, those, those three things, right? Like what's the high risk, high risk, high opportunity, what's the uh, sustaining investments, and then what are the insurance investments, right? Where are we doing that? And what are the payoff cycles? How do we make sure that we have enough of each of those, whatever, whatever our goal is, to hit the payoffs like when we need to make them, when we need to hit them? If you don't do that, you know, if you don't do that, then you're just like, you know, you're one guy at bat, you know, and, and just hoping that you, you, you get enough swings. Um, in the, you, know, you, you, want, you, you know, you don't, you don't want to be the, the poker player. You want to be the casino. Yeah, exactly. In, in these observations and you've given us the five and then the ABC, yeah. I don't think I heard the C. Did we, I not? So the C, the C. Yeah. The C is culture. So we talked about awareness, right? Yeah. People yeah. don't know why they need to change. They're not gonna, uh, behavior. If people don't, uh, know how to get off the beach, it doesn't matter that they see the tsunami. Uh, and then culture, right? How do you create a culture that allows people to uh, take the time to understand, uh, to take advantage of, and to be resilient to change, right? A lot of organizations, they, they, they in, in the quest for optimization, the quest to hit the quarter, they fail to, to recognize the real challenge, right? You don't want to be in a situation where your investors believe that you'll be worth less in five years than you are today, right? And right. yet in many organizations, we get so focused on hitting the quarter, right? Uh, so focused on reliability that we attract the wrong investor mix. And so we want to be thinking about how do we create a culture that, that uh, creates the right opportunities, the right resilience and the right investor mix, the, 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 the ability to be worth more in five years and seven years and 10 years than you are today. Because at the end of the day, the game in business isn't to have a great quarter. The game in business is to have more great quarters. Amen to that. Um, is your is this uh, thesis, this point, this worldview, really meant for business leaders and entrepreneurs, or does it, does it work with civilians, if you will? I, I think it works really well. Uh, the um, the things we've we talk about, we've written about, uh, work really well in everyday life as well. I think they're highly scalable, right? Like what I was talking about, about experimentation, right? Yeah. That same method of thinking about investment, it applies to your retirement portfolio, right? It should reply, uh, apply to your career. How do you make sure that you have the right range of skills that no matter what happens, you're employable? Right. Uh, when you think about the range of possible futures, like how do you generate that range of possible futures? Um, you know, how do you make sure that in a world that's not what you had hoped, you still have opportunity and you're still increasing your potential? Right. Like one of the things I really suggest to uh, to people coming out of school, they say, well, what, what should I do with my career or, or to mothers who are really concerned about like what their kids are going to do um, is like have them talk to a bunch of grandparents about all the things that went bad. Oh, I love that. All the things oh. they didn't expect, right? We oh. have to have that historical perspective of what's that range of possibility? What happens if you had a kid you didn't expect? What happens, uh, you know, if you wake up on a Tuesday and you've got a brain tumor, which is what happened to my dad and, and you can't work again? What happens, you know, what happens if uh, you wake up on Tuesday and, and AI is automated, you know, your entire, you know, career, like, say you're a lawyer and, and, and contract law just drops out as a thing in five years. I'm not saying it will. I'm saying that these are things that these are the kinds of things that have happened in the past. They happen to people. Are you resilient to those? And the way I think about it in corporations, and I think that you, we'd have to work for a moment to map it to individuals, 
Those are our four major bus buckets of kind of risk and opportunity. Oh, I, want, I need to hear this list. There are financial risks. They're what, what I call the four foes because I'm like a consultant. So I've got to have acronyms, right? Uh, foes, F-O-E-S. Um, so you have finance, right? You have operations, you have external changes and you have strategy. So we talked about like the things that go bad and we focus on you know finances, right? What if you have an asset loss of some sort? Um, uh, or, you know, what if, what if you, there's an operational hiccup, you know, professional in the business, but also in, in, in your life, what if, you know, you lose your job? What if, you know, all those supply chain issues, they kind of scale down, right? What if, yeah. what if housing prices triple, um, uh, what if there's an external shift, right? Uh, I live in, a beautiful part of the world where there are forest fires. There was uh, five acres burnt last week, right next to my house. What if? what if that goes bad? Uh, and then, um, you know, what if there are strategic issues? So I, I recently wrote a book and, and I do a lot of advisory work. Um, you know, what if my expectations on that income, they're not accurate or like my mm. dad, you wake up and you're a world famous consultant and you wake up one day, you've got a brain tumor and you can never read again. And your entire job is to do analysis. Like what, what happens when you do that? And, and do you have the flexibility afterwards? So yeah, I think, I think these ideas are completely uh, relevant to business, but, but they're also scalable to personal life. Jonathan, you've given us um, quite a bit to think about and to chew on. Um, and, and I would expect people uh, listening can dive in more and find, I'm, I'm gonna guess you're not invisible on the internet. And we can I'm, we can find lots of cool John, stuff about Jonathan you. Brill is everywhere Google wants to be. 